Um, yeah, welcome back to uh, Two Bros in a Coffee Coffee Shop, or should I call it Three Bros? Yes, for those of you who aren't on the video, we've got a guest with us, and his name is... Hey, I'm Will Luck. Pleased to be here with the boys. Yeah, yeah. This is Jason. And I'm Grant. We forgot to mention the names. Um, but uh, yeah, we're excited to have Will on the podcast because what is your occupation? I am currently a store manager at Starbucks. Whoa. That means that he's a barista, everybody. Certified, yes. Certified barista. The bla- guy that wears the black apron in the Starbucks store. <laughs> I, I I will go on record and say I don't own a black apron. No, but, the, but you know what I'm talking I, about. But, but I should. The master. I'm, I'm definitely qualified. I'm definitely qualified. That's when you know you go. If you have a complaint, you literally go to that guy. But, and but see the true the true masters. It's it's all up here. Yeah. You, know? you don't want to. Really you want to be seen because that's the problem. You want to. You want to be <laughs> undercover. You don't want to be seen, but you're there when you're needed. You yeah. Because when, when there's needed. people like me. They have a complaint. You want to make sure that you're uh, not... I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, come out of, I'll come out of the back room for customers like you, you know? Yeah, oh, my <laughs> gosh. You're like, oh, this guy. I got to get rid of him again. Oh, my gosh. I mean, even then, weren't you that guy? Like, if we go into the history of how you know Will, you guys have known each other for a while, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want me to tell her or do you want to Yeah, well, you, you get started. We did meet at Starbucks. Yeah. yeah, so basically, through my schooling, I don't like really working from home because sometimes I just like, you know, I'm like TV's there, my bed's there, I want to have a nap. There's there's the microwave. So the, I mean, the <laughs> microwave really. Yeah. I mean, you, it's just that beckoning, that dark hole when there's nothing in there and you're like, it, I like, can microwave something. Right? I'm trying to think of something else than like, my. I said microwave, but I'm thinking more like toaster, like toaster strudels, Eggo waffles. Um, a cereal's my know. poison, man. If it's oh. there, it's in the cupboard, I just keep going. That's the problem. So then uh, I leave to go to Starbucks and I live in Stony Creek, but I go to Burlington because Burlington Starbucks are way better. No offense, Stony Creek, but they're just not at the same game. Um, and uh, I go down, and all of a sudden, I just walk into the Starbucks that doesn't have a drive through and it's way better because it's less traffic because um, of the restrictions at it. And all of a sudden, I just see this guy, and um, we're chatting it up. And then, because usually most baristas, it's either hit or miss. Either they don't, they want to just make the drink, or they they like to socialize. So Starbucks is usually pretty good at that. Um, and one thing led to another, me sitting there for 10 hours straight for, <laughs> um, five years. Yeah. Oh yeah. We just jab at you and then yeah. you're just in the chair, in the hole. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just sitting there all day studying for exams nonstop. And then it works into being, finding out that it's an addiction basically. Um, with I mean, work. you could call it that. Yeah. <laughs> it does happen fast. When I started noticing that I was like there when I was in the States and not just for school and I was like, Hmm. I think this place is like my home. It's like my basically my second home, I would say. Yeah, well, that's what Starbucks calls it the third place. You know, you've got your your home, then you've got your work, and then you've got... They kind of want to jump around the second cup. They want to make sure it's the third, <laughs> we're the third place. Right? <laughs> First choice, third place. Right? <laughs> oh, because I know that there'd be some complications behind that probably, but right. that's fairly... Yeah, no one had really fixed like Tim Hortons. Like, that's like the... It's like 2 a.m. in the morning, and you're like sitting in there, and you're like, yeah, or, or you're, or you're like, you're off the grid, you know? Like yeah, off the grid. There's always a Timmy's. Right? An on route, and then Starbucks is like, exactly. This is too it's far what you get us. in the morning. You go in for that Timmy lineup, that huge lineup of cars sitting outside, yeah. and then you get your coffee, right? Yeah, but yeah. you're sad, but you're saying, can I get my double double? I'll get the Starbucks <laughs> later on when I can finally find one that's not like out the door. If all well, you want to but it's 7 a.m. Right? and it's got to get in me. Yeah, you know? but the problem is, is if you're in the morning, it's all the early moms with the kids, and they're trying to get their coffee because they. They know the Starbucks is good, and then it's all like Tim Hortons for the high school kids. That's what yeah. I would assume, right? Yeah. Well, you know what? And You'd be surprised. Really? Uh, I used to I used to work at a cafe that was right down the street from uh, Hayden in Burlington High School. Right. And um, yeah, no, eleven o'clock or eleven twenty hits twenty minutes after lunch every day without fail. It was about thirty minutes of high school kids lunch rush. Yeah, it's, so it's crazy, they, and I, they're not paying with their credit cards, you know. No, it's, it's <laughs> the dad. It's yeah. either it's either on the app and it's getting reloaded consistently, yeah. or it's uh, preloaded, or they have. Like I, I, I couldn't imagine like my parents like you know oh. He's down to five dollars. Better yeah. uh, top, top it back up. up. Top like, yeah, no, that's that was back in the good old days when they had the frapp- the raspberry frappuccinos, and yeah. they used to be actually red instead of being clear. Instead they, of being white, yeah. they took the dye out. Still a sad yeah. day. Because I, I saw you the other day, and you, they made that drink, and I didn't say anything, but they made the raspberry frappuccino, and it actually. Um, look clear and I was about to tell someone that but I was like I don't be that weird guy yeah, just, just like, like, just like walks up and the other person like listen kid back in my day 
Uh, when the raspberry frappuccino was actually pink, like, like oh, yeah, oh. it was actually good. Well, every, every once in a while, if it was like a cute little kid, I'll like you know add a bit of like red tea in it. Kind yeah, of mm-hmm. to make it yeah, better because yeah, yeah. you don't want to make them cry. No. That's the number one thing you don't want to do. Well, they order cotton candy and it looks you know like not like cotton candy. I'm yeah, <laughs> that is. That's a that's the five year old dream you don't want to kill. Kind of like <laughs> Santa and all that stuff. But hey, Santa's real. Don't don't worry, kids. No question. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, um, and you being a Starbucks barista, you were able to bring us some coffee. I that, did. That's kind yes. of sitting in front of us. And yep. uh, do you want to talk about a little bit about this stuff from Kenya? Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's one of our single origin coffees. Um, so we actually used to have this coffee as a core coffee, and it was a blend. Um, and we kind of discontinued it because we're streamlining a lot of our coffees. But we brought this one back. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a medium roast coffee, so it's kind of smooth drinking. It's not too bright. It's good. Um, it's the mid range for both. It's mid range, but right? it, but it uh, it definitely has a really like juicy kind of fruity flavor to it so mm-hmm. it uh yeah it, it it you definitely notice the citrusy kind of flavor to it which is uncommon for a medium would you say this is one of your go-tos you i mean it's not really food. available anymore but if it was it would be yeah um, but you've got connections so would you, we, we, we brought it we brought it back and we're gonna we're gonna enjoy it while we can everybody right, right now this right, is an right. exclusive coffee very exclusive get it at starbucks while it's hot yeah, that sounds legit. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be there tomorrow. Just buying a couple bags now. Right. Everybody's gonna be like, "What the heck are you doing?" Oh, you gotta load up. The weird thing is, is in the states you can actually get um, stars for uh, what's it called if you buy the coffee bags. But sometimes in this Canada, I don't see that. You I'm pretty sure you do. I'm pretty you sure you do. do. Yeah, and you can also uh, you can also get them with your stars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Stars on stars. Yep. On double stars. No, no, no. Yes. You have to pay. You have to pay to get the stars, but you can then yeah. cash them in. And I, I don't know. If you do it right, you can you can rank them up. That's what I oh, used yeah. to do with my mugs when I. I used to buy mugs. I used to buy like um, the like, I think it was like three mugs at a time, and they would add up to like thirty or forty bucks. And then I put that on stars, yeah, and you, then it was just got it. unreal. That was yeah. back when it was like one twenty five. It does add up fast for yeah. for a drink instead of one fifty. I was just in the Starbucks the other day, and I was like, um, "Can I get a drink?" And they're like, "You're five stars short." And I was like, one forty five, uh, and I was like, "This is the worst day of my life." Like not actually, but so you know that's when you like you you know buy like a scone and then you're good. Yeah, and you're the, good. remember in the OG days where you used to buy thirty scones yeah. to get the star yeah. status, and is it a dollar twenty five a scone? Oh yeah, because you get and the it discount. Was mm-hmm. Literally hilarious. Yeah. So, one one second, I have to actually get her something for that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> the the only constant at Starbucks is change. That that, that's uh, true. That I mean, I'd have to. I, I don't really know too much about Starbucks. I haven't been in it a lot. I'm more that Tim Hortons guy that Jason's always bashing. Well, like I like <laughs> it's funny. Like I like I mentioned earlier, um, we I was originally a Timmy's guy myself, and uh, yep. you know, the company taught me how to how to be a Starbucks guy. Exactly. So. I mean, that's what uh, Jason's trying to do. He's trying to get me on coffee. So. Yeah. Well, there's Starbucks is definitely the good way to get your foot in the door because we have drinks that don't even taste like coffee. We have, I'm sure we have we have countless people that come in every day that, that aren't really, they wouldn't identify as coffee drinkers. Right. I used to be one of those guys yeah. when I used to get a chai tea latte and then I'd be like literally 64 grams sugar because I'd be like, can you add an extra pump of flavoring in oh, that? And then, and then everybody would be like, what the heck are you doing? And I'd be like, no water either. Uh, wow. Like, my, my personal my personal favorite, you know, memeable BuzzFeed ripoff drink that uh, that people order these days is they order a venti cup of water, which is free. Yeah, yeah. And they order it with 10 pumps of raspberry syrup. So it's literally just candy water. <laughs> and it costs 50 cents, right? Because no. they're only paying for the syrup. So the kids come in and they order this and... Uh, no, yeah. but see, I'd be the guy who would order a chai tea latte, but I wouldn't do anything special like Jason. I, I would just yeah. do the syrup, just chai tea latte. Treat, I don't like, mean good. to be extra. You just got to be you extra. Know, the brand, the brand caters it. to it. The brand caters to it. <laughs> yeah, There's right. that. But now it's all ask me now instead. Like they're, they're trying to limit the drinks on purpose to try to like. Yeah, like expe- Every, everything's expe- being streamlined. Yeah, you know? yeah to make yeah, it faster. Sure. Faster service. But uh, the fact of the matter is everything's still there if you want to. Yeah. You know, I think the sad thing is, is from what they changed is not writing on the cups. That's to me the big one. Yeah, because I, I love I, my name being I miss, cursive. I miss how personal, you know, and I have a very fine, you know, kind of like. Well, this is and, interesting because you're like the actual person who has to write on the cups, sure. and you're actually saying you miss. I totally do. Yeah, yeah for sure. I miss there's, being there's something about there's something very personal about like sitting there and you're, you're writing it. Right. Whereas like when you're when you're punching into the computer, you're looking at the screen, you're not even making eye contact with. the For person. sure, you got to actually look right. down like okay yeah. A B. And then and then and then of course the, sure. old, the the timeless gag of you know putting your phone number on the cup, you just can't do it anymore, right? Because that's type a number into their name the computer just erases it well the crazy thing is having it like i used to always get mason nason 
Ja- and then I finally get Jason. Yeah. Like my name yeah. sometimes he butchered, but it's the funny part. Like you get to look at it and then sure, yeah. like, you laugh at it. But the cool thing is, is sometimes when they run out of stickers, they'll still write on they'll it. Still and it most states they still do um, writing on it really? until they change it over. I, I, I was just in Atlanta and they're still writing it, and I was like. Guys, I can't believe you still write on. They're like, "What are you even talking about?" And I was like, "You're gonna have printing in the future, and it's not <laughs> yeah. good." It's like Dude, I'm foreseeing their future. That's, that's the song in the South, though, man. I was down at a bar in Atlanta called the Vortex, and yeah, they were like, "What is this?" And I'm like, "Well, that's the chip. You like insert your debit." What? Like, they don't even have this, that. No, this, was, this was four years ago. Okay, I don't know if they no, have it now. But I think it's still a struggle. But they were, but they were, they were, they were, they didn't have the chip, and right. I was just like, "What?" Like, and you guys don't have tap? And then, no. Well, even then, if we go in reference to our last episode, we were talking about how we were. Going down to the states to go skiing which was awesome but we went to a tim hortons down there and they had the old coffee lids right like they just <laughs> oh, they're yeah. just OG not i tim love hortons those lids, lids. Man, i love those i lids. don't know i You're justin bieber is trying to shut it out uh, shout it out right now to make sure that we get the lids back and uh, he was trying to like you know I'm, I'm not normally pro bieber but i mean i can definitely back him on that <laughs> yeah it was kind of weird because like tim hortons says it says cafe and bakery shop there and i was yeah. like can i get half french vanilla half coffee because that's like my go-to if i go to tim hortons and they're like do you mean the French vanilla cappuccino? Right. And I was oh, like, boy. Oh, <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah, we're getting fancy they're, they're now. And up. then I was up. like, no. I mean, <laughs> have coffee, have French vanilla. They're like, we don't have that drink here. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, okay, I'll try. Because this. everything, you click a button and it comes out. For there, sure. Right? Yeah, they're not, there's no like cus- there's no like detailing in it. It's just literally automated. And then it's like, I went over to Grant and I was like, Grant, we're going to try something. And I know that you've never had this before, but I don't know this is going to taste the same because everything in the States is like way more sugar. Like you get the hot chocolate there and it's like just juiced. Like yeah. it's like, you're, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I had it in New York the first time ever it came to Canada, the, the US and I literally almost threw up. Like I was like, okay, I'm throwing this uh, hot chocolate in the garbage because it's literally like just pure sugar. Um, but not saying that Starbucks doesn't do the same thing. Not trying to just bash on Tim's that hard, but well, since they since they've sold out to Burger King, it's kind of just uh, that. Uh, you know what? We can bash them. Burger King doesn't make coffee. That's no. true. That's true. Like I'm pretty sure, unless they do they're like a gas keeping, station. They're just keeping their head above the water. Yeah. Really? They're, they just want the profit. That's it. Like, yeah. They're like, oh shoot. Oh my gosh. It's hilarious. Yeah, Burger King's not even Canadian, are they? No, no, they're not. No. I actually was in Germany once, and we were looking for food, and it's like, oh, Burger King. Well, at least we know we can get something yeah, decent from really. there right well you know that in the uk they had horse meat in the in the burger king chicken what? nuggets what? yeah and then they got a huge thing but everybody loved it so everybody was mad about it but they're like this is the best nuggets the i've ever time, had delicious and i was like stop complaining if you like the horse like meat the nuggets, eat, eat the horse meat you know what i mean <laughs> right but, and, then, and then don't complain when they go back people, to people want to people want to you know eat their like have like keep their cake and eat it you know like yeah. i mean it's just like one of those things where you see it and you're like you know? No, for sure. So I'm like, at the end of the day, I know this sounds bad, guys, but if horse meat tastes good and we're going to release it, I wouldn't mind trying it. I don't know what you guys think. That's true. I know that I'm probably I mean, going to get pe- some hate out there because some people ride horses, but I mean, like, that would be pretty interesting. Well, I mean, there's like dog meats, there's like um, crickets, like other countries, they eat different oh, yeah. meats, right? And it's just well, like every, everything's, everything's culturally relative. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure that I'm. I'm not sure, but like, I'm sure there's countries out there that you know we like we eat deer, and that's like a totally normal thing. Right. I'm sure for there's sure. Some where they're like deer, like we never see those. Like you know, so it's it is. All well, like I know it's thing. illegal, but in China they they're like I was there, and they're like, do you want to have shark fin soup? And I was like, what? Yeah. And then they're, and then they're like, do you want to have turtle soup? And I was like, man, you're killing little baby turtle from Finding Nemo. You want to kill that thing and serve it to me? And I was like. Sure, it's all but, then, <laughs> but, then, oh, wow. but then, but then my dad was like, "That's the market." You know? But then my dad was like, "We're not doing that." And then I went to one more place, and they're like, "Do you want to have dog?" And I was like, "Well, should I try it?" And then we're, he's like, "No, we're leaving. We're not eating dog." And oh, I was like, like, "Okay." So try to try some new stuff. I, I appreciate, I appreciate your openness to experience, but for sure, right. I'm like, I walk in and I'm like, you know what? Let's just try it out. But um, if it's not technically legal i probably shouldn't well be you're you're also like come on i gotta eat the turtles i'm i, I switched to paper straws for the turtles right? i'm trying why, to see why, why, yeah, really, why am i eating it really right? like, at, the, at that point you're just going right back to plastic you know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. i'm trying to uh, people are like are you really going to use that straw you're like you have no idea where i've been these last two weeks <laughs> <laughs> this is before the no save going, the turtle no going back <laughs> right, right this is before the save the turtle movement went out so people weren't as upset so right. now it's like stream yeah shark fin soup's very 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 public now everyone knows yeah. about it the code you know right for yeah. sure i'll uh, i'll pour your coffee first will don't mind if i do i mean it's it's okay watch out 
Yeah, I don't want to spill it on Will's lap. Ah, oh, it's all good. I constantly smell like coffee all of my clothes. So. so that's the Kenya. Have you gotten used to, like, your clothes just smelling like coffee? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's far worse um, professions, you know, to leave work from, right? Like, you know, my buddy's a mechanic and constantly smells like oil, which right, some people like, sure. I guess. My... Uh, and my brother worked at Don's growing up, so you know that that's that the grease from McDonald's is one of those smells that you really just can't get out of your clothes, right? For and sure, like, you must like burn upon return home. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just he he would walk into the house and I'd be upstairs and I'd know. Yeah, and you'd smell yeah. it. Yeah, it's really it's like when you walk in a subway. You know, you walk in a subway and you just smell it and you're like so hungry instantly. For sure, like, for what sure. is that? Is that a sandwich? What like what is that sauce? You know. Well, then even then, a lot of people like relate the smell of coffee to something like nice or like family or something like that right in yeah. the morning oh yeah and, and the quietness and stuff so yeah i mean coffee's not the worst thing to smell in the world either no. um I'm jason we you. also f- you don't want it oh, oh shoot no way, man. No wow way. big story for no one here in the podcast i almost put cream in will's coffee <laughs> and been, i forgot that would have been, been the end he doesn't like dairy but i yeah. i know that he's a true he wants to taste the coffee for what it is he doesn't want to be a savage like me and grant that just drink <laughs> cream in our oh, coffee. Oh, I, I, if, I, if I did put anything in my coffee, it would be a touch of cream, but yeah. Right, just for sure. F- since I was 15 years old, my old man brewed me a pot of coffee and said, do your math homework. It's always... You know what? The stuff. respectful thing is right now, guys, he's drinking out of the Pike Place Market mug, drinking the Starbucks. It's just the right thing uh, to do. I feel do. like that is very appropriate. This is the, the ceremony mm. that Starbucks wanted to have. Yeah. I mean, we also kind of forgot before you poured it in to talk about the mugs, but like, yes. what, are we, what okay. are we drinking from today? So I'm uh, the mug I'm holding is Seattle. It has this like art vibe to it, and it has um, artistic, I guess. You very modern. Yeah, yeah, very modern. It's the "You Are Here" there series. If anybody wants to see that on YouTube. Yeah, and it's like a blue green. Yeah, blue green. It's one of my favorites because it's very like very happy. Yeah, um, very Starbucks soft. Mug. Well, even then, the inside's that nice light blue. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. mind looking like, at that when I'm like, drinking. Right. This one's really nice. Where if you're waking up at six a.m. in the morning. You're half asleep and you're trying to get ready, and then you see this nice blue. It's like uplifting. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So this one's more like the one that Will is holding is more like, you're, you're. It's like twelve o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, busy you're, marketplace, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're vibing. You're about to like write up some huge paper, yeah, some document, the fish, right? Pike Place of Fish Market. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You're yeah. about to do some yeah. like huge deal. And then Grant, what what kind of mug are you holding? Yeah, so I'm holding Washington, and it's kind of it's a nice kind of blend of green, red, and Washington blue. State. Washington, yeah. yep. Nice. And so it's got like that nature vibe going on. There's like a giant apple, and then even here on the back, it's got the White House. So like, yeah, it's nice. I like it. The the story behind that mug actually. Yeah, there is the, a story behind the this other mug. two. Um, I had to get my sister, uh, Lydia, that lives in Atlanta. When she, I actually went out to um. Pike Place Market, but before that, I knew that the mugs were getting discontinued. So I said, can you please buy me the mug before everything goes AWOL? Because I know that those are going to sell like hotcakes online and then do like some $150 ones because that's what they sell for usually retail. Right. If, if they're high yeah, value. Once, and once they're sold out. Yeah. yeah. 150 depending on like Paris, Pike Place Market and all that stuff. So I got her to get me that one, but I went back later on and I was like, I want to get Seattle and I want to get Washington. And um, this is going to sound bad, guys, but... I traveled from 1st to 14th Avenue in Seattle going to every single looking, Starbucks looking for, mm-hmm. looking for the mugs. Because love, yep, here's yep, the thing. As I told you guys, I used to go get these mugs while I was on a sales trip. So I purposely booked the flight brutally early in the morning where I got up at 5 o'clock in the morning and I flew, I think, right at 6. And I landed with the time change at like 8. So I went and he didn't land until like 12. So I had like a couple hours now just to, kill. to just kill. And then I went up that little space needle thing, but I went to every single Starbucks and I went in and I was like, so do you have the Washington mug? And they're like, no. And I was like, okay, we keep going. And after all that whole time, they had no mug. And then we're <laughs> yeah. driving to our hotel that night. And I'm like, he's like, I actually need a coffee. But this guy is like, he's OG. He drinks only black coffee, yeah. original kind of stuff, right? So he goes up and basically he goes, like Will. Yeah, <laughs> he, he is. He is the Will. He is. He wants that classic nice stuff. Not none of that. None of that cream or anything like that. Frappuccino. <laughs> he thinks it's stupid. So we go into the the Starbucks and it's actually really really neat. I'll see if I can get the photo and Grant can put it up on the vi- the uh, YouTube video for you guys in my Snapchat stories or something like that. And I walk in and I go, "You got to be kidding me!" And this barista is like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, 
I've been looking for these for the last four hours, and she thinks I'm nuts. Yeah. Which, and, uh, let's be honest, you kind of a little bit are. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I was just, like, determined, because I was like, there has to be washing oh, yeah, yeah, the, you have the look mm-hmm. on your face. Because, like, right? these were in the stores, like, the physical ones by yeah. the by the marketplace. And um, she said, all the mugs for Washington, the, all the rest of the You Were Here ones, were sent to this store. And, and we're supposed to actually be putting them in the back of the store to get picked up. But you know what? I'll sell you them. And I said... Is there any way that... Cause, oh, because they were literally being taken off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so oh, the, wow. the thing that I'm, yep. I'm kind of disappointed, like Starbucks, you guys are great, but they started actually like ripping the You Are Here ones off the market to let the be, the Bin There series right. ones do right. well. And I was like, not for the collectors that are trying to do it. Like that's Yeah, the just, completionist. That's there. crazy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I said, can you please let me do it? And the girl actually hooks me up and she goes, I got two left. So my dad actually collects them as well. And I and I got the mug, and then I literally went to the last store by a fluke because my coworker wanted a coffee and, and just a tall. I always I'm like, do you want me to get you a grande? And he's like, nah, tall. That's it's like, it. It's like, yeah. at night, he's like, nah. tall's good. He's like, tall's he's good. like, he's like, twelve ounces. That's all good with me. Yep. Yeah. So um, get that's the mug. A, that's the magic number, though. Yeah, 12, for sure. It is not bad. Like our Keurig at work only does ten, and I don't. I know it's kind still. of annoying, especially when we've got so, the fourteen yeah, ounce mugs that's here. That's very, that's yeah. very uncharacteristic. It know? feels bad because I feel like I'm not drinking. The fourteen ounce, coffee. fourteen ounce is perfect because it's the no spill guard twelve. Exactly. You know? yes. The crazy thing is, is the old series one before this one. I don't actually know what it was called. Mm. Was sixteen ounces. Ooh. Which is nuts. Oh, the oh, you're talking about the old ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I have a, I have actually have an Edinburgh one. Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, it's got the nice. castle on it. So yeah, we got the coffee, and then I actually completed the set. So on video right now, this is the, um, I guess you could say Washington slash yeah, Seattle kind of northwest. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, north, like just below Vancouver, which is the, actually the only other Canadian one other than Niagara Falls that we did, we talked about last time on the podcast. Um, that I have, so that little area, and then exactly Portland. the whole thing they call that the Cascadian. Uh, yeah, you know, I have the North whole America. West one actually. My friends went actually out one in California, and I got them to get me like Orange County, and I was like, "Give me those two And then nice. I was able on the same trip to get Portland, Oregon. Right. That one's beautiful. Ooh. It's purple, and there's a bike ride on it and stuff like that. That's so. nice. That's nice. I mean, but at the same time, this isn't all just about mugs, and we've got Will and the That's, barista, right? And so, like, Mug, mugs are clutch, though. I appreciate a good mug. I mean, it's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. Uh, I this mean, is really good too. Yeah. The nice Kenya eh? coffee, like, it, it's, 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 very, but it's very jumpy too. Like, you taste the kind of citrusy yeah. notes in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. It, it, like, it's blowing out some of the water I've had recently. Like, it's 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 nice. Yeah, Starbucks. It's Starbucks bold. hits the nail on the head every once in a while. You know? For sure. Yeah. I, I mean, you were even talking about kind of the citrusy stuff, and I don't know if we want to do that coffee next, but we're we're kind of nearing the end of our first kind of section just because we've been talking for so much. I mean, we had dinner before, and we spent about probably like two hours before we even started the podcast just talking. So we're going to like totally run out of time. So this is going to be a, a long-er episode. But for sure, it's a, the, the the viewers want it. That's the problem. <laughs> right, they a want more, a little longer more open episode. source. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They're telling me right now. They're probably hitting me up on my phone. Please make a longer episode, Jason. So here, this is what you guys are getting. Right, for sure. The people asked. Yeah, they right. asked, and you're receiving. Yeah, but anyways, so we're gonna uh, actually finish these coffees, and we're gonna be back. Um, and we're going to try the, which one are we going to try? Um, you know what? Which one was the one that was with the citrusy, the orange or the lemon or whatever? Yeah. We'll we'll do this next. Yeah. So we're going to do, uh, brothers, we're going to bring back Notorious, which we had last week. Um, yeah, we're going to try that. It's a, it's a magical coffee and it's very luxurious. It's, it's smooth. All right. So, uh, we're back and, uh, we just brewed, uh, small batch, good vibes. And Three hours later. Actually, that's their, <laughs> that's their tagline. But let me just tell you, if they actually made a coffee that was called Small Batch Good Vibes, all day. Yes. I would literally buy that right now, drink it tomorrow, the next day, and the Dude, next I day. Because I would wear that on a t-shirt. I said that, and it actually sounded like good vibes. Oh, yeah. It sounded sick. So, sorry, um, to not confuse people, the Notorious Espresso Blend, it's on actually our website, if you guys actually want to see it. Um, it's it's actually from the groceries, Ooh, which we should mention. Yeah, if you go to two bros in a coffee shop dot com, we now have an actual website. It's not crashed. Everything's up and running, and uh, you can get Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, our Instagram, mm-hmm. our Twitter page, both for YouTube links, and every single thing that we talk about on here for products or something like that. We will have a link in there for you. Um, and if, if you can't find it on the website, it will be in our YouTube link. Yeah, for sure. So everything you guys need, 
and and if you can't find something and you want and you want to know, just send us an email. No, don't send me an email. Send him an email. Yeah, two bros in the coffee <laughs> shop at gmail dot com, gmail. guys. Dot com. So back to uh, what we were talking about, um, brothers coffee roastery. Um, we just brewed that up, and we're about to try it out. And let's try it see. out. We've already tried it. Out. We've tried it out. That was I mean week. for Will. I have never tried it out. No, it's going to be interesting. But so. when we were talking earlier, you smelled the coffee and it smelled unreal. Yeah, yeah. It so. is. Uh, it's magical. Just uh, oof, that's not bad. That's a little bit more of a better coffee pour than last time. Yeah. This is true. I, uh, I by an accident poured way too much into Will's coffee. He was being nice <laughs> to yeah. not say anything, but um, it was more or less ninety five percent Will's cup, five percent ours. I, was, yeah, I don't think um, it took about half that press. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was hilarious, and I was like, that mess was a mess up, but we'll we'll just go with the flow. So we'll do a little bit of that. I mean, come on. Will likes his coffee. I was going to say, I rarely say, I rarely say less coffee in my cup, please. For sure. Yeah, you're never I, complaining at the Starbucks for more coffee. Because when you go on your shift, the question we should all ask and everybody wants to know, if you're going to get that free drink that you're going to get in the um, when you walk in the morning, what do you get? Yeah. Um, so I'm a pretty like low maintenance guy. Um, Counter to the fact that I do work at Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> true, I, I normally true, just go for, true. I actually just get like shots of espresso over ice in a cup and I just drink it that way. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, just as, as my daily uh, my daily special, um, you know, dentist orders, like, you know, drink it, drink it out of a straw and I can't drink hot coffee out of a straw because you're not going to drink it black. Only old people do that. So I, uh, I drink just an ice drink, you know? Wow. So the crazy thing that I should tell you about that you, I don't know if you've ever done this for me, but my other barista from, is it upper middle? No, it's not upper middle. It's Dundas, Appleby and Dundas. Appleby Dundas. 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 Yeah. Talking about not, directions. Not, not, uh, yeah, Appleby I Dundas. Wonder, I wonder who it is because my good friend manages that store. So I don't know. He doesn't uh, take notes. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Second <laughs> time. On the, on the third time, you're going to get me. I'm going to say. He's just going to be like, <laughs> yup, no, pour it in. Side note for one second. I keep trying to put cream into Will's coffee and uh, it's not good. Um, you're just I'm, on a roll. You're just yeah. autopilot. Yeah, I'm on autopilot and I just feel like everybody should have cream. And I need to stop that because I actually just drank some black coffee of Will's. And it and wasn't bad. It was good. And I enjoyed it. And I don't know why I shouldn't have tried it. I should have tried mine black. But that's how it is. And this one actually looks a lot better. Look at this pro guy smelling his coffee before he Wafting drinks it. Wafting it. So what I was saying was. But it's not going to be like one of those wine tastings. You know, you just spit it back out. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Um, His name's AJ. And uh, where was I going with that story, actually? I think I went down we never know what's going on in your mind, Jason. No. <laughs> well, there's a shout out to AJ and um, <laughs> I, I, shout, shout out to Winston too. Yeah, Boy. Winston. Oh yeah. Right, cheers, this, boys. This is true. So, what do you think of the coffee, Will? I know you just sipped it, but like, how you feeling? Oh, it's nice. You it's tell nice. me what you think, because I'll tell you mm. what what I'm feeling right now. I want to see if we match up. Yeah, well, I don't. It's definitely got the kind of flavor notes of a darker more bold coffee mm-hmm, for sure um, like when you drink this it's like it really hits you yeah well the when i smelled it it smells, it smells very nuanced but when yeah. i when i drink it right in your face you know it's a, yeah it's and a it's very, like it's a it's punch a, it's, like, it's a very bold coffee if you're wanting to wake up in the morning this will do the trick um yeah, nice nice dark roast in the morning oh that you're yeah. speaking my language i uh i understand that keurig's not the best but um when I get up in the morning, there's actually a Starbucks French roast that I drink Ooh, with the Keurig. Yeah, we don't even make French roast anymore. Oh, that's I know. Stuff, I don't that's know. That's stuff, that's stuff, we, we, we call it French toast because it's just, <laughs> it just right. nice and burnt, you know? Oh, I don't know why they don't, what, they, why they stopped making it. Uh, you know what? It was kind of a culty coffee and it wasn't very popular, but uh, you know, it's, uh, so the they people, make it for the Keurig, but they the, the people the that liked it really liked it. Yes, you know? nice. But if you if you like something kind of like that, we still have a, a coffee called Italian, which is one step down from French roast. Right. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, much better. Um, I like the bold coffee, and it's it's very strong, but it's not quite like just like you know it doesn't have that burnt flavor. It's just mm-hmm. very. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, even today we tried some French roast. It was today, good. Which was good. Mm. Um, so the, what I want to ask is, in yes. Starbucks, you can buy the heating mugs called Ember. Yeah, the Ember mugs. The Ember mug and the Ember travel mug. Yep. And uh, I want to know what your take on that. Is it better to well, just Well, okay, do... hold on. You're, you're jumping ahead of the gun. You're, you're dropping the name Ember, but people might not know what the Ember mug is. And <sighs> so the Ember is, mug... Yeah, this is true. Uh, the Ember mug is basically a mug that's a, 
like electric heated with a battery that you can run for it's, it's saying on the website 1.5 hours temperature controlled exactly yeah, yeah, temperature yeah. controlled and so i don't know like is that better like do you want to leave your coffee sitting in a heat yeah well i mean think of it like this right i mean some coffees have a hot plate that the pot sits on and if you leave it sitting there for three hours it's still going to taste kind of burnt and stale right so it's just a matter of like um you know the the, the cup itself is not sitting on like a hot plate i mean it, yeah. it has like a like a like a warming kind of like throughout the cup right so I mean, I've never drank out of one, so I can't speak from experience, but I can say that, like, they are very popular and, like, people do speak highly of them and they're they're very expensive. So people For like... Sure. They're, like, a hundred and... Yeah, like, so the, 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 the like mug, that. the mug itself, um, the, the ones that are out now, I think the second generation ones are 140 bucks. And, the um, travel one you're talking about, The, the right? mug. Yeah. No, the like mug. This, oh. Like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, then there's the tumbler, which is... Um, That's the one that you rotate. Because yeah. I think the, yeah. the mug is the one you place on the coaster. Yep. And, yep. Heats up, and then the tumbler one, you rotate on the bottom yeah, and then it, 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 you it can cool yeah. or warm. Yeah, so you can you can toggle it. But uh, but yeah, so then the tumbler, there's there's a, a first gen and a second gen. and I think there's Second like a, gens I'm looking at is 180 USD, whereas yeah. the uh, actual Ember mug is We're 100 talking USD. We're 210 okay, so, Canadian? So there you go. We have different prices in our store. But right, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Better or worse? Uh, well, our mug is uh, one... 30 so right it's, it's well because it's not the oh, US, right, right. So, so, so they're it's roughly on par yeah, exactly on par, yeah. so uh, that being said we Wait, have, that's crazy the first gen and the second gen ember tumblers also have a big price discrepancy so one of them's 120 and the other one's 200 in our store right yeah so yeah because the uh, number two looks volume. like about it would be at a 200 yeah, yeah. yeah. at the yeah, end of yeah. the day i don't know if i could justify buying a 200 dollars. yeah they're kind of just one of those like swag gifts that you drop to your girlfriend and you're like yeah Yo, hey. morning coffees on sunday and like, oh, though it looks like the uh they, they are, they're, they're very cool, but yeah, I mean, oh, I, sure. I just, yeah, I don't know if I would make the investment. I normally also, I'm the kind of guy too that like, I just like, coffee's in, you know? Like well, I, the thing. I, I, sit, I sit there, I drink my coffee, I read the paper, and then I'm done. Like, it's not like I'm gonna like let it sit at the table. For, for my ma, like, she brews a, cu- a cup of coffee and then, you know, just like leaves it sitting in some room. So there's like, you know, four cups of coffee all over the house Sunday at like 11 o'clock, you know? And right. Like, yeah. Well, that's a crazy thing with Dylan um, that I've talked to you guys about, my friend. So I get a cup of, um, like, a flat white. Upside down, 1% with half blonde, half regular espresso. I was telling Will about the other day. Best drink you can get right now at Starbucks, in my opinion. I write that down, folks. Yeah, it, <laughs> is, really it is actually really amazing. And if you think I'm crazy, try it out, and you'll, I'll, I'll prove you wrong. You, it's, it, you'll love it. So um, I get in there, and I drink this thing, and I love it so much that it's literally down the hatch under five minutes. Like, I sometimes I, I can savor it, and then he's just like, Jason, how do you drink it so fast? And for some reason, for me, I see this and I go buy this mug, and I'm like, okay, guys, I'm, I got it at 27 Celsius. It's it's ready and to then go. The coffee's gone, and, and then, then it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. And then the thing that I don't like is I'm carrying around this mug for the full day. Let's say I'm in Toronto, and then I'm like, what do I do with this mug? You, you know what the best? I have a um, I have a kind of like, I, like I have an actual tumbler if I'm like going camping or for if sure. I'm going on like a long drive or like whatever. A Yeti. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. essentially it's, it's a Stanley, but it's very similar. Ooh, um, and then, name drop. Okay, and then, <laughs> and link in the description. And, uh, yeah, and then but then I've also got a um, I've got like a crappy plastic um, little like reusable cup. Yeah, yeah. like and, one of like the the white girl yeah, cups. Yeah, 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 exactly. And and that thing I can just like rinse it out, put it in my bag, non issue. Is that the one that they do for Christmas? Yep. Oh yeah, so yeah the red, have, the one that they give away for free. Yeah, so now mine's yeah. not the red, but it's the same type of thing, right? And so I, that that one I don't have to worry about. I throw it in my bag if I if I do have to ditch it for whatever reason. Reason, I do, and it's like I was. Issue, right? I was luckily in, I think it was in like South Carolina. Oh no, it was in it was in Georgia, and there it was like in a Kroger Starbucks, and it was on the day that they dropped the cups. And I know they always go out where people oh, yeah. like to grab them. Each store gets. And I was like, yeah, two hundred. And then I, I walked in, I was like, I know that this store won't lose it. And there was a bunch of people, and I was able to get the red cup finally. Ooh. And I was like. In my honor, I just got this mug. Because <laughs> a lot of people that I know, the baristas, it's like, it's hard to save them. And Yeah, it's, it's definitely like taboo. Yeah, you know, like if, it is, it's unbelievable. I Yeah, they're definitely very competitive, right? The the Red Cups and people, yeah. people well, funny story. Um, on the day that we launched our Red Cups this year, both of our bars went down. Like, really? And, and, and then oh, like, and just, just our steaming ones. So we couldn't steam any milk, right? And they didn't show up for four hours to repair them. Yeah. So it's launch day. Yeah. And our peak from six to ten. We're like, we want chestnut praline. Uh, right? And everyone <laughs> wanted chestnut praline. They wanted caramel brulee, right? And we're like, yeah, 
Um, we, we, and you guys have the red cups? I'm like, we do have the red cups. Um, we just, we can't make any handcrafted beverages. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, well, what's that? I'm like, well, all of the new drinks. We, we, we can make frappuccino. They're like, no, it's, it's minus tenna. Like, right, we, right, right, right. Like, and so, so it, was, it was grim. So we gave out a lot of free red cups. Yeah, because, just wow. because you have to just get a, a soft handcrafted and, drink. Soft in the blow, right? So we just had to give them out because it was, Ooh. you know. You don't have a fight, right? No, well, we, we made I it. I walked in, you know, started throwing hands in general, all around. Our philosophy just... Make it right, you know. Exactly. Make it right, you know. Get people out of there smiling, and so yeah, that was uh, yeah. The red cups are definitely kind of hyper competitive, you know. People mm-hmm. people turn up early for them. I wasn't so a huge fan of the the Christmas mugs. This, they're the Christmas cups this year. No, they, yeah. they do artsy. Like it wasn't bad. They were they were pretty good. They were but, merry coffee, right? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. I don't know. The red OG cup was my favorite, but there's so much. Just the plain red. red. Yeah, the plain yeah. red was definitely controversial for sure. Uh, it was crazy, but yeah. it was beautiful. Well, you know what? Merry coffee is like one step closer to. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's I feel like it's the perfect middle ground, you know, like it's gonna it's gonna give some people something and it's gonna give others yeah, exactly. something. it's just they're just they're playing it right down the center and I uh, The green I, version was my favorite. The the, the the cups last year were like design wise. I yeah, think they wasn't were, it they were per barista, yeah, like they're yeah, they were all barista design. designs. Nice. Yeah, so that was it was cool. awesome. Yeah. They'll do stuff like that every once in a while, you know. But so those were good. They they looked really nice and they're a couple different designs. Yeah, this year they were okay. They were Yeah. Like it was a, like right down the middle and in a few Not bad, not bad. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. That, that's true. Yeah, we I did mean, have nice merch this year, though. Ooh, there was nice merch. Yeah. I, I mean, already Jason, he's going to be picking up all the merch for next year, anyways. That's so. true. I uh, I do like it. The cool, the coolest merch that Starbucks has ever sold was in the Pice Plate Market in Seattle. They sell leather handcrafted aprons for a hundred and forty-five dollars. Cool. And I was thinking to myself, and I go, Jason, you buy all these mugs. You can't afford it. <laughs> You're crazy. You're insane. You just walked up and down for four hours trying to find mugs. Are you really about to buy this after waiting in line for an hour to get these mugs? And I was like, that's not worth it for me. But And then I thought about the USD conversion. I was yeah. like, that's $160 at the time. I think it was really bad. And then I was like, no, but I've all I've, I have offered Starbucks baristas money for, uh, for aprons. aprons. Yeah, yeah that's, one of those, that's one of those. But you just sold them away. We do, but we don't throw them away. You know how many times I've seen them using them as like as, as oh, moths on the bet, ground? You bet, you bet. And I'm like, what's that over there in the corner? Yeah, I know it's terrible, man. Um, but yeah, we send them to a launderers, right? Everything gets used mm, again and again and again. Sure. Some of the aprons we get are clean, but just like, you know, like... This one's gone through the cycle a few times. Yeah, 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 this, yeah, one's, yeah. this one's been like, oh, express there's like, only. There's like, there's like literally a shoelace like holding it on their back. And <laughs> right. Like, yeah, no, there's some, like, there's welcome some, to Starbucks. Some gr- <laughs> the ones in grim shape, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, that's right. That'd it's be, hometown. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, the, that's the rural Georgia aprons. You know, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. You're, you're just wanting the copy. You're not caring about anything else <laughs> at the point. Well, I mean, even now, there's tech coming out that like might rival your job, like the Chemex 2.0 pour over coffee Ooh. maker. Like, I don't know. Yeah, How do you feel? feel about the new tech coming out well so we there's a lot of talk about you know automation right yeah and, sure. uh, and the fact of the matter is uh you know our bars are even more automatic than like than like you know other independent coffee shops are like, are they the same they're not right? really semi-automatic like you know we don't even have like and how they tamp the coffee so i mean there's there's stuff that people can get at home now so i was just in like i have a you know i have an espresso machine at right, home for sure. and it's just it's so clutch because you just you know it's all the functionality of a keurig like it's that easy but the coffee is just so good right and you just get a perfect shot of espresso every time but you think it changes the flavor being automated sometimes you know what i mean i will say it's i think it's all about kind of um customization so when you have a fully like a semi-automatic machine where you can like control the extraction time and you can control the grind and everything right. that's um and it's fresh you will definitely notice it, but the thing is, you have to know how to do it right. Exactly. So, you still need that human touch. Whereas when I wake up in the morning and it's four thirty in the morning, I don't want to crash my car on my drive into work. I and that shot of espresso, just you know, pull it and it's perfect. Or you're having friends over, right? And you can just like pull like five shots and everyone sits down and enjoy them. I mean, like, that tech alone, with like, because I don't drink like crazy lattes and everything. So like, if I'm just sitting at home and I got that, that's like, I, I get it. Um, right. So that's why Starbucks has really branded themselves in terms of like some of this tech that's coming out is awesome, right? And like, like so, yeah, that automatic Chemex. Um, well, the best analogy. The fact of the matter is, people have at home 
like like full like barista express breville like seven well when right? starbucks like, went out of if business, you know how to use that you're golden man right so well when starbucks went out of business with the targets in canada they were selling the full-fledged machines well let me but tell they you were like 10 grand let me, let me tell you they were selling them on yeah you could you could see them for 10 12 grand on on kijiji and stuff and like all the all the franchisees were like just trying to get rid of them right yep. but it's like and it's like yeah hopefully you're a barista and you know what you right but it's like but they're very like you click a button the shots come out like you know, there's a bit of finesse to it but it's pretty automatic but that being said so we're trying to like gauge ourselves in terms of uh you know it's all about uh you know human connection right, right? because Personality. I mean, there's, there's certain jobs that won't go away right mm-hmm. so i mean like the fact of the matter is you know um robots are gonna be able to do certain things call centers are already gone like on yep. the list that type of thing right but when it comes to like a, like a masseuse Right, like, exactly. am I gonna, am I gonna, am I, do I want an AI masseuse to come? Maybe it knows my body really True. well, but like, I still don't want it touching me. Well, right? then, even so, then, if uh, a, a, a guy like Jason comes in and he asks for his custom drink, yep. then like, well, what's, right. the, what's the robot gonna do? Right? right, and is the robot gonna, is the robot gonna, like, you know, when you like call into Pizza Pizza and like the, the, it like kind of walks you through to the get steps, your order, and yeah. it's really clunky and it takes a while. And obviously, that'll get better with time. But the fact of the matter is, like when I first met Jason, and we're we're breaking down exactly what he wants and stuff. Maybe at fifty years from now, the robots will be there, and like mm-hmm. they'll be able to, you know, like you go through the menu, and then you get your perfect For drink sure. popped out. Or even imagine you can type in, and then the next time you go, it knows your right, drink right. order well, perfectly. And so, right. And so we're we're already kind of there with the with like Starbucks mobile order. So you mm-hmm. like you save your order from last time, and people. But the the problem. I would say with that is you you can get the perfect drink but with like the rate that I go um, I walked in with Will and I was just like man I need something new and that's where I started going down the rabbit hole of yeah. trying to find something mm-hmm. that was in the range that is not really bad with sugars but something that is some like still has that nice flavor yeah, the, the and then is. I've jumped so all the way from chai teas to flat whites I've gone through the full bunch and the major thing that we tried was the carmandon latte yep um, the and then and then I take the syrup from that and I'd, and I'd say let's mix it with this and then we'd start going and every time I saw Will when I was studying or I'd do anything like that um we would just try to like invent something new which I would love if Starbucks would do something like that in mm-hmm. a program where if yeah. someone comes up with a drink like the one I've, I just talked about introduce that into the market because right. i've told every single barista and they all made it in front of me because they said this is really interesting let's try it out and they're like wow so there this is, is amazing for, for the record there is a lot of like bottom-up stuff that the company kind of pays attention to um, but they had a website that they took down yeah yeah so they, they, had- they, they took fan submissions and stuff too but um but even like from like you know, we we have to, I can, without getting into too much of the like insider baseball of the whole thing. Like we <laughs> yeah. we do have like a lot of um like like programs and uh, stuff where where we give like feedback on um, recipes on operations stuff, right. and then the company kind of sends out updates. And every once in a while, you're like, oh, they listened, you right. know? So like there are things, and then every once in a while something happens, and we're like, really? Like that's the opposite of. <laughs> oh, so, for but, sure. but that being said, like AKA every status. once in a while, a new drink comes. <laughs> well, you know, people people are used to it, but a new a new drink comes out, and where it was it was something that like we've been like pitching for a while. Mm-hmm. It's like everyone was putting lemonade in their refreshers, so then it just became a drink because nice. it wasn't a drink, right? Yeah. And so now it became a drink, right? And people were putting coconut milk in their refresher for a long time. Mm-hmm. Now it's a drink, right? So there's there's certain things that. You know, like people were asking for a different, like, man, the espresso is too strong. I right. go somewhere else. Mine will hit one day. And then, and then the blonde, espresso. the blonde espresso got launched, right? Yep. And people were looking for a smoother, less coffee flavored drink because a lot of people at Starbucks don't like really like the taste of coffee, right? right? So there's a lot of different, you know, things that, you know, the company does. Robots understand. can do technique. But they can't do flavor. They can't do flavor, and they can't feel that instant feedback. They're right. Like, Ooh. And, a, and a robot. And a robot. If the machine is off calibration, like a robot can see the times, but it can't like taste it and say, "Oh, that's getting off," because right. it's still within or the window. Or not even a smell. Either, and it can't right? recommend. Like it can't be like it can recommend off a certain base, but if it's like, okay, well, I need this flavor with this, and where's your like path of like what you've tried? How can we get that? Can yeah. you? Yeah. How can we get down this route to you get me to the coffee where I love it, and then you can tell me like this has this kind of note, yeah. and this has black and cherry, that's, and, and like, that's the that's the rapport that like you build with a customer over a period of time. That, so like, that's why I say, that, that. and that's where it's a bit of a relationship where you learn the person and what they like, and you can kind of tweak stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we got we got some regulars that that like um you know they good people, but very you know very finicky, and they will actually not accept their drink. 
from certain employees. Wow. Yeah. It's just like they see like and now that being said, we're all trained the exact I same. I walk way. in the Starbucks, but, well you're not here, okay. I'm but you not but myself. <laughs> there, there are people, there there's a customer that comes into our store and they have a very particular beverage and like they will only have it made by four or five people and they want it. It does to the thing is is and I don't think everybody knows this, if I get a cappuccino wet with blonde espresso all the places I go, it fluctuates. Sometimes, yeah, it can oh, for be sure. Well, there's the fact, the it, fact it's the matter espresso is, shots. It's a recetto shot. It could, be, it could be, but the fact of the matter is too. I mean, wet is like a, it's like a ambiguous term, right? They say wet basically means that you want more milk than foam, but like, there's no like set point. If you say light foam, they get mad at you, and then they say it's a latte. They and then I, uh, it's not a very foamy latte. Yeah, right? they're like, they're like, it's a latte. So you Whatever. Just order it. I mean, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm of, a little salty. It's a lot but... of semantics. But that being said, I mean, you know, you once you once I find out like. How long you like? How you like to drink? Is that good? You want a little more, a little less? That's something that you build with time. And and a robot, I mean, it's essentially you know you have to have that exact command for them, right? So we'll see, we'll see. But that being said, coming from a home perspective, I mean, there's tons of at home coffee types that, sure. that like you never need to leave your house. You know? Yeah, I feel like the and you go to like I've done some jobs for my family business and like engineering firms. Like you go in there and you see the kitchen, and the showers, and like you're like you never have to go home. Like, <laughs> you really you have don't. like this is better a better coffee machine than like the nice you know stuff camp, that's even in like camp coffee in Burlington. Yeah, like, you know for sure. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so but the the crazy thing I would say at the very end would be Chemex can be automated, but it's kind of like driving a standard car. You enjoy it. So if I enjoy waking up in the morning yes, and sir. doing that special pouring to get that coffee right on point, it's, it's a ritual. more of a it's yeah. A it's a it's a daily habit for me, and it and it brings me joy. Mm-hmm. Versus me watching the coffee maker do it, it takes away that little bit of. Well, some light. people like the ritual of going into the Starbucks mm-hmm. as well. So everyone has their different ritual, for sure. right? That's me. I mean, <laughs> even then, we bought a coffee press, right? And we use it at work, right? There's a difference between using our yeah, Keurig totally. or the coffee press, yeah. right? And I think the ritual is a big part of uh, you know the addiction culture, if you may, you know. Yeah, for sure. It just yeah, because it it just feels right you know what i mean like when i'm standing there in front of the keurig machine and then it's like it's not working well, it tastes not better, working. but it also tastes better when you work for it you know like I mean, for sure like when i'm cleaning that stupid coffee press out and then <laughs> i'm doing the beans and all that stuff and i'm blending it and then i'm getting the water then i'm preheating it then i finally take that first sip i close my eyes and i taste that nice roasted coffee does make a difference versus just pushing a button and then the little water comes out. Also, Keurig does give you microplastics. Just letting you know. Um, over time, they say it's actually bad for you. Um, really? Yeah, because yeah, the cups, because of all the hot water, it no, breaks down the plastic. Yeah, so right? when you when you right. go through that little tab, it says that it it can like break it through. Like huh. it's it's like it's kind of like Niagara Falls. It goes uh, one centimeter back every single year, which is really like not that noticeable. But uh, over but time, over time, well, Elvis Presley's toxicology report, like the fourth or fifth most dangerous chemical in his body, was actually plastic from plastic water bottles. And you know, this guy had other chemicals in his body. Yeah, and then we're talking about, true. I mean, the fact of the matter is, and that was like 10, 15 years before anyone heard about it, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, you gotta mm-hmm. watch out for microplastics. Right? Oh, curry. Okay. Because I think the Keurig, <laughs> I think the Keurig guy was actually disappointed after he made the company. Now he don't said, don't don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure he killed himself. No, yeah. really? Yeah. Because I think Look he, into I it, think, I think he was Snubs. worried com. about um, about all the waste, waste. that was yeah, happening. He, 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 was, did. he did. He was very. He was. He got very existential about the fact that he was ha- like it was having such a negative impact on on like the like the environment. Sure. Environment. And now it's just kind of like they've but tried to streamline. I am. Pre- I am pretty sure that he he. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Bro, that's why. So here's the thing: local coffee shops support them. Just better for the environment, better for your well-being, better for the soul. Well, we were talking about environmental stuff, and that literally got me thinking. There was just like that Starbucks announcement about like the environmental commitment yes. about like so uh, they 50% just, percent we just, reduction. We just dropped that. Yeah. So they just dropped this because one of the factors that they don't want to talk about is some girl was raiding around in New York City. And she found a bunch of food that Starbucks said, by 2020, we will not have any waste. Then she started going through the garbage and finding all this food that was thrown out mm-hmm. um, that was, like, still good. Technically, it was past the 
purchase date, but right. not the best date. So and yeah, um, so we 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 obviously are very like, conservative about what we keep. Well, to well the reason why is they used to do it, but then people started complaining about it being old. Right. And then there was people getting sick, and then they're like, okay, now we won't do yeah, it anymore. Yeah, we we over we overcompensate, and we we throw everything out. Which, early. in my opinion, is smart. Now, that being said, we safety. also like a lot of stores have an initiative set up where like so we have someone from Salvation Army come oh, to for pick sure, up the yeah. food, and so that's like what it's all about, you know. Like I mean, so. As long as we are very like you know we're we're conscientious about keeping our waste in line, but at the same time, all of our food waste is going to you know the hungry. So I mean, it's not like for sure, it's not like the worst. It was Starbucks possible. when the Starbucks stores do a thing. Part of it, like I think that this was this one girl nitpicking at just in this certain stores in sure, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I think that Starbucks is doing a really good um, initiative for this, and everybody nitpicks at the big companies, but at the end of the day, yeah, um, Starbucks is trying to be they're, socially. Conscious. They're trying to do this with yeah. multinational across. The whole world. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's it's a, it's like, a big global initiative. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and, and we got to take it easy on them. And I just want to like reiterate that it's like the, what the initiative actually is, is they're trying to reduce their carbon emissions by 50%, 50% of water withdrawal from like um, open sources, and then even 50% reduction of waste sent to landfill. And so like that's what their initiative is. Yeah. Um, Do you think they can fulfill that goal? So well, there's, well, there's a lot of, um, I can only speak to kind of like my own local things because, uh, you know, 50% is like a huge reduction. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I'd like to that's think, like I'd, I'd like to think we can. I mean, these are obviously usually just frameworks for setting and you're trying to like move towards them. But that being said, um, you know, I know that on a local level, the company provides a lot of like opportunities for like um, like employees such as myself or people I work with to kind of like form these um, like they're called like greener apron um, like collectives. So basically, right. like, you have like a like a like a sustainability um, yeah. committee like in your district, and it's like you know partners that are all like working towards like okay, so if we're all unified on recycling, we're gonna reach out to these local. And so like, you're just working with recycling depots and stuff like that to kind of make sure that everything's, so like handling recycling in your area, if every single district in North America did that, that would be a big reduction, right? So it's just a matter of like, it kind of, it's a lot of like, once again, bottom up stuff and yeah. you know, grassroots kind of work. I, I think they, the company does give you like the opportunity and like the resources to do that. So. I think there's a there's a global message from the headquarters, but then it's, it's a, the decision from the individual managers of the store that have to make mm -hmm. the right decisions yep. to push that because there's only so much that the CEO can do um, other than them hiring the right people to run the shop. Yeah, shops. well, and I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have so people you, you, in you corporate big wigs that are all about. You can't get mad at the big guy as well. for running all these shops. You you have to let them manage it as well, right? You, yep. you, a lot of people have to take the responsibility for the job that they're hired to do. Yeah, and let's and let's not forget it's all about like you know like Starbucks is trying to you know, source responsibly to and everything. So there's a whole supply chain, right? For it's sure. not all like within the stores. Like, I mean, a lot of damage is done through, you know, like, like rainforest harvesting and stuff. So For sure. you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of rules when it comes to sourcing coffee and a lot of yep. companies, you know, like to find ways around it. And I'm not saying Starbucks is, you know, bulletproof, but um, they try to, you know, source rainforest certified coffees. And mm -hmm. They're not in Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm proud of I mean, and we're also talking about rainforest and stuff, and what, we might as well move into the travel section just um, just kind of to move on. But, um, like, you said you've been on some flights, and we're, we heard from Delta that they put Starbucks in their planes, like on their flights, right? Certified brewed Starbucks coffee on their... Uh, on some Pike Place. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. When you fly... They give you that with some cream, and it's free actually. With some cream, with, no doubt. No yeah, doubt. <laughs> with some cream and sugar. But um, they they make sure that they that gets the the Starbucks and the and the thing I want to know is, do you think that even if if it's being served as Starbucks, or do you think that they should be certified baristas if that's what the the Starbucks? Oh, uh, do you is? think like each Delta flight should have like at least one, one like yeah. certified black yeah. apron barista? On the yeah, floor? like it, well, she, I mean, she, they can she, be green. No, okay. but <laughs> she's saying she's saying she's a flight attendant, yeah. but she went to a Starbucks school. Or he, or he, or he, he or she. Yeah. Um, twenty nineteen. Yeah, uh, I actually almost became a flight attendant. Twenty twenty. That's true. 2020 shoot. True. But the thing is, is, before I became a salesperson, Oops. I actually wanted to become a flight attendant. Huh. And then I was going back and forth, and I didn't know much French, and I didn't know much Spanish. Um, and then I was like, well, that means that I should go do sales. And then that's what took me there. So the thing is, is like it wouldn't be that long, but just to get the art down a little bit, because I yeah. feel like that's what Starbucks is passionate about. Well, actually, about. A, lo a lot of... Um 
a lot of people, funny enough, the other way, go from Starbucks and different airlines hire people directly out of Starbucks to become flight attendants because of the like nature of our customer service and like the kind of expectations. Really? So yeah, I, I, know, I know. I got a bet that Reese's are. I know, I know three people personally that like one one went to Porter and two went to um uh, well one went to WestJet and one went to Air Transit. Wow. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So and they just people see Starbucks and like we'll we'll give them the interview, right? So I mean it's. It's one of those things where, but that being said, if the, so you're saying if the barista, I don't know how they brew. Like, I don't know what they do. Like, I wonder um, if, like, it's, it, what I've, have, what I've seen with my, do they have, do they have my... like a Keurig on the plane and that's like, like, <laughs> they just coffee. push the button, like, it's, Starbucks cause coffee. Because if, if that's the case, I uh, no training required. So it, it's know? a coffee pot, but the problem is, um, the water I heard is not the cleanest on airlines. Right. And I'm wondering, do you think that the water could make a difference? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that. So that's what I'm worried about. I think when I drink it. It's only when I'm super tired. Like, if I'm not on Air Canada, I'll get a David's tea because tea is pretty good to cleaning the palate after you have a coffee. Yep, but right. um, I, I'll get the coffee, and it's not terrible, but it, it, it tastes different. Like, if I get a Pike Place Market coffee from Starbucks, and then I get it on Delta, and it's supposed to be the exact same coffee, it tastes different. And I'm trying to narrow down in my mind. Yeah, I get that. I mean, that it could be. definitely be water. It could definitely just be the brewing method. It could be how long it sits there for. For sure. Um, you know? Because if, if I'm at the front of the plane. It's going to take a while to get and down then, there, And then right? it, it finally gets to me. It could change in that, let's say, 35 minutes to 40 minutes that it gets to me after serving everybody. It could take, take a difference from actually going from the back of the plane. That would be something cool that we actually try out. If, what would be interesting is if you're, sitting, if, if you're sitting in first class, yeah. oh, the coffee's really good. And then everyone back in economy, the coffee's just like stale and burnt. At that it's like, this is really, <laughs> really warm. dark coffee. Yeah. We should do a test. We should get on a plane. I'll Once sit in the front. front of course. You sit in the background. You, you guys can just live, <laughs> live stream the whole thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Grant, I'm in the back. Uh... Oh, I mean, I'm in the front. Shoot, I don't want to be. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, fine. All right, you take the back. I'll take the front. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh my gosh, but it, it, it'd be really neat to to taste the difference. But um, that's not a bad. Uh, that's not a bad. You know, like it's in, it, it's in different. I I respect that Delta's trying to do some oh, yeah. kind of Starbucks. Oh, yeah. But I can taste the difference. Well, but it's like, but I, you know, I wonder sometimes, right? like Starbucks is kind of like universal. There's in a lot of places. And like I was getting sushi at a great sushi bar in Mississauga. And um, yeah, so it's doing on the iPads, right? And you get down to the bottom and yep. it's like, it's got the little K-cups. It's Starbucks Pike Place, Starbucks mm. Dark Cross. And I'm like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, at least they own that it's K cups. That's you know? true. Like, that's they're true. like, we've got a machine in the back. If you want coffee, it's there for you, right? Like I, after, I like drinking. I'm like, this is my eight eight eight, eight o'clock in the morning coffee. I'm mm-hmm. like, I can yeah, taste what's it. What's going on here? Right? Yeah, no, this that is not noon. <laughs> pot, pot, pot of tea every time with sushi. That's the only way. Yeah. Pot, green pot tea, of tea, green tea. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. I like green tea or like that white passion tea. There's like white. I don't know. You know what, what do they make? The white tea. Did they discontinue at Starbucks? You know that white tea at Starbucks? Does that ring a bell? Oh, we used to have a. Did we used to have a white tea? I don't know. That's oh, like, youth berry. Yeah, that's really old. Yeah, that's really. Sorry, old. guys. That that's an oh, yeah. that's a long time ago. Well, how long ago was that? Two, like, three, two, three years ago. Yeah, that was a good new, tea. Yeah, that was a good tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was nice. Um, that's why like Pat, like Starbucks got rid of like the passion tea. Yep. Was, now we just have the iced one. That's why I always get okay. A little life hack right here, guys. I know it's supposed to be tech hacks, but do you get peach tranquility? Um, it's a hot tea, and then you say leave room, kind of like for your coffee, and then you say. I want to splash a passion tea in it. It's one of the best teas you're going to get. I know it's a coffee podcast, but it's amazing. No one's ever turned it down, and that's my go-to tea if I'm trying to uh, not drink a ton of coffee after I had it. That's the tea we had on uh, Tuesday, right? Yes. It was good. I liked it. uh, Grant loves tea. Yes. And he thought it was great. Well, that's about that's, as, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's about as tea as it gets, like yeah. pure herbal, no caffeine. It was caffeine, so good. It was like, so good. Yeah, it was nice and fruity. No, for sure. Like, it's no David's tea, but uh, uh, David, David, David's tea is blessed. Yeah, I, it is. I, um, Please, I've said this for years, Starbucks and David's tea make a partnership together. Would well, be the thing amazing. is, they, they just they just closed down all the Tivanas because it wasn't a fortuitous... For sure, like, Starbucks is the only one that's branching out now. Yeah. Well, we we still carry Tivana's teas, but I mean, like the the stores didn't make sense standalone. Like mm-hmm. whatever David C's doing, they got to keep doing it. The like, they sugar, got, they got the branding, they got the. Well, well the sugar in Tivana's tea was out of the roof. Like if you, I actually asked, I was like in Starbucks, and I was like, what doesn't have sugar in? It? And you guys are like, oh, uh, the green tea. Yeah. And it was like everything else is like. Well, the just green, packed. the green tea and the black tea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But and it's, it's all yeah. I mean, like the peach drink. Yeah, well, they're they're all sugary. But yeah, now that being said, David's tea is good, man. I found God in my super ginger tea. It was so good. It's so, so it's good. amazing, right? Yeah. So the my favorite's Forever Nuts. Nice. 
It's and it's on Air Canada. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and it's not it's caffeine free. So after I have my coffee, it's not gonna affect me because I don't want to go over. I think it's like five hundred milligrams. I always have to check because I'm like, how much coffee have I had? I do not want to have a heart attack today. Right. Just based on your Fitbit activity. You're like, yeah, we're gonna. Look, I'm like, okay, my heart rate's at hundred and fifty two. Okay, maybe I should. Calm down. <laughs> I haven't even gone to the gym yet. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's 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 not good. Sometimes I drink too, way too much. Right. So and then we start the podcast, and I'm like, well, I'm having some more coffee. Well. Will shared uh, just a tip about like you can actually eat coffee and like we have these tangerines right over here. Do we want to try them now, just to end off the podcast? Sure. Yeah, because sure. like we've got uh, some coffee grains here, right? Rosies. Yep. So let's try it out. So this is you get a you get a nice fine grind uh, coffee, and then you got will, some nails. You'll end up actually I don't. Then you'll end up dipping. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> What you actually, what you actually, me, what you actually want to do is you want to get a knife. And I'll, wanna, I'll go get a knife. Slice them so you Stay can dip tuned. them in, and there we go. Yeah, I mean, once again, the uh, the texture a little questionable, right? But uh, you know, wash down with a bit of coffee in your. And didn't you do this with Turkish tea? Yeah, but well, well, so you, if you if you get it fine grind Turkish coffee, it's almost like like powdered, right? And uh, that way you can actually like eat it. Like I'm, that I'm, sounds I'm, that sounds so weird. I'm but just I, I'm just I'm just suspicious about the fact that this is like coarser than than I would I would probably want to eat. So mm, I have I'm true. not a samurai sword, but yeah. master I mean. Um, but these are the three knives you can choose from. They're uh, one's sharp, one's smooth, and oh. one's jagged. Oh, you're saying you guys the others are the others are serrated? Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's the right word for it. Oh. They are uh, I understood. They're black and steel. There we go. Gotta. I'm a, I have a bit we of a knife. right now I have are a bit of a cutting knife collection at home. an orange like an apple on cork. Well, this is like <laughs> you know, this, this takes, not a plate. This takes me back yeah. to uh, you know being at soccer. Here we go. I, I'm now I'm holding an apple orange. Basically, yeah, it looks like an apple. Right. All right. So yeah, once again, might be a little too coarse for us, but uh, let's okay. let's see what happens. All Dink right. it. it sounds so like, you uh, literally just dunk the citrus fruit right in there. Yep. And then you put it in your mouth. Oh my goodness. Okay. okay. Make sure, do you guys have any more coffee? No, I have okay. you, you guys can wash it down with mine. That's oh, what you have to do. Okay. It's so, different coffee, so it's going to be interesting. Dude, I actually like this. I good. actually like this. Okay. It's really good. So you said I might not, I like the grains. Like it's. You like it thick. Like I actually like the grains. Like, you were like saying. the grains good? No, it's good. Because when it's, because when it's, um, when it's super fine grind. You almost, you don't even feel it, you know? Right. Okay. It's almost like a, you know, like those like like coffee crisps or something yes. like that. Ah. Like, it's just like that now, hint of flavor, but with now, the juice. I'll, it's leave, really I'll leave this bag here with you. Wow. Grind this tomorrow super fine. Yep. And then brew it like you did. For sure. And then, and then dip this while you're drinking this. And you'll just, your mind will be going, because this is good. Try it all synced up in the same coffee. And you'll, you'll Lunch tomorrow. Be Dude, Let's do it. it. Yeah. So the good. one thing that I'd love to talk about yes. is... Um, we have a French press here, but me and Grant are going to try to do a French press traveler mug and we're going to both get them and it's going to be, okay. I think it's like 15 bucks, but it's, you can travel. No, it's 20 bucks on Amazon. 20 bucks on Let's Amazon. See. Pull it up. It looks amazing. And the thing is, is now we, we can literally, and it's made by the same company. Ooh. Oh, Bodum. Yeah. And yeah, the yeah. cool thing is, is I'll grind it in the morning with my, uh, That's pretty cool. makeshift blender and, um, I'll actually what do you mean in. makeshift blender? It is literally a blender. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I will literally now be able to put hot water in it. It looks really good. Like, I, I'd, I'd love to try it out um, with this now. And then I'll be able to drink the coffee. Because I am now at a point where I'm Stanley sick French of Keurig. Fresh? French press. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, right there. Okay, now, Will is looking boy. up something. This is, my, uh, this is my boy I got at home. The Beast. Wow. Yes. Okay. So is that? Hold so on, that is like, this. Is that the this Stanley? Is, this is specifically my Stanley right here. Yeah. It is a green. It's green man. So insulated. It looks like basically your mom packed you a hot chocolate thermos, and Dude, it's no, that super looks like sizing. that looks like you've been two weeks on your hunting no, trip, I and the coffee is still say, warm. That is know, the classic that is. hunting green, that is. like clipped onto a carabiner yeah, on your backpack, yeah, and that's sure. the way she goes. Yeah. You're you're going to Yosemite basically, <laughs> and you're and you're wanting coffee for days and nights. All right, okay, Yosemite just just like absolutely triggered me there. There's I heard the cutest thing the other day, just to be purely tangential. But so a buddy of mine, uh, so his wife, right? When they started dating, yeah, they uh, they did. They did an alphabet date thing. So every date they went on, 
was a um oh like, like a, a, like, a yeah so so a oh. was like uh you know like they like they like went to like a like a restaurant in the attic or something and like God. You know, so b they went to a bar right and so c they they went camping so each one of their dates was like the alphabet that like, is a really awesome it's idea so cute lie. and by the time they got to r they were they were like married so their honeymoon <laughs> so their honeymoon that's was like, awesome you know, yeah, yeah yeah so it's like i was like that's a great idea so yosemite was uh, one of that's the, one how you grade spots. your wedding too it's like i got a grade of r that means i got married before r like that's solid right <laughs> that's solid it didn't take long you know so when you get a grade of a like a plus there That's you it. go it Romeo was just and like, Juliet love at first sight exactly like, you know shotgun wedding like, <laughs> yeah for sure and like now we got a full alphabet ahead of us like exactly <laughs> I just had seconds and I gotta say this is probably one of the best hacks I've ever had yeah no it's good okay well you're, you guys are gonna be mind blown tomorrow with the uh, with the Kenya probably gonna shed a tear right yeah, single for yeah, sure I'm I'm gonna be shocked well, anyways, thank you so much, Will, for hey. coming on. Will the always pleasure. bring in crazy pleasure. stuff to the table. Legit crazy stuff to the table <laughs> yeah. that we got right in Wait, front of us. Coffee, what a barista, so that's eh? A, that's an experience. It was, uh, what, like three years ago that we met? Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's crazy. In, infrequently, you pop back into my life, and here you are. And now, like, and now we popped into your life, and we're like, no, come here. There come on go. the podcast. We we'll try to have him back on, guys. Glad I could join he, uh, in this undisclosed location. Yeah, exactly. In a bunker in North Korea. Yeah. Don't tell Kim. That's right. Oh That's right. Now he knows we're here, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're giving him free coffee from from the state. Yeah, hey, come come try our coffee. That's right. Sure. sure. If anybody wants to know, we will put everything we have in the description and on the website. I don't know how much longer we're gonna have this Kenya coffee if it's only this for the year, but it will be on our website. Yeah, yeah currently us. currently in Starbucks for the next probably two three weeks. So get yeah, it. Yeah. So here. that means get it while it's hot because this yeah. episode's gonna drop on Tuesday, so it's already running out of time. So. Yeah. So pop in. It's an orange bag. It's very good. Dip Kenya. your dip your grapefruit into it. You know what? We'll put an Instagram Blue label post in the as back. Well. Yeah. We'll we'll make an Instagram post as well cool. with the Kenya. So yeah, make sure. We'll put it on the story. A little highlight. Yep, for sure. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, c- more coffee-oriented, well, more like basically Starbucks-oriented <laughs> podcast. <laughs> very, very, very niche. <laughs> <laughs> I know how we were like supposed to talk about like tech and traveling, and it just it just turned right into Starbucks. Uh, spin off. Go to Italy and try their coffee. You'll never want to come back. Yeah. Right. We go, go to Starbucks, Italy, one in Milan. No, ne- no need to go to Starbucks when you're in Italy. Yeah, that's true. I always get. It's not healthy for my heart when I'm in Europe. I get a coffee in the morning, cappuccino, and then I get a coffee at night because it's so good. I'm just consistently yeah. getting cappuccinos nonstop. They're like, what do you want? I'm like, cappuccino. And they're like, you know, man, it's a 10 o'clock. And I'm Dude, like, no, you can walk into. You, you don't can, understand what I drink in Canada. It, this is amazing. You, you can walk into a butthole cafe in the middle of nowhere in Italy, and it's the best espresso you've ever had. And the guy's just sitting there making it. No, no lie, but if I still went to Italy now, I'd still go to Milan and go to a Starbucks and buy the cups. For sure. Because the You Are Here series is still running in Europe. So, Too Long Didn't Read p- podcast. Go to Italy. Go to our website at twobrosinacoffeeshop.com. Yep. And we will see you guys next week. See you guys. Very well. This, this was Jason, Grant, and Will. All right. Have a good week, guys. Mm-hmm.